In the trenches of World War I, the utilization of snipers became a formidable aspect of warfare. The widespread adoption of rifles equipped with telescopic sights marked a significant evolution in combat strategy. Initially embraced by the German Imperial Army, these scoped rifles proved remarkably effective in the challenging conditions of trench warfare. Observing the success of the Germans, the British and French quickly acknowledged the potential of scoped rifles and incorporated them into their military arsenals. This technological advancement fundamentally altered the dynamics of the battlefield, enabling sharpshooters to engage targets with unprecedented accuracy over considerable distances. The advent of scoped rifles elevated snipers to a position of dread among soldiers in the trenches. Their ability to fire from well-concealed positions, coupled with the evolving art of camouflage, made them increasingly challenging to detect. In response to this looming threat, soldiers developed a heightened awareness, going to great lengths to avoid exposing themselves to sniper fire. This mutual escalation in tactics led to a cat-and-mouse game between snipers and soldiers. Recognizing the need to counter the menace of snipers, soldiers became adept at minimizing their exposure. In turn, snipers adapted by acting swiftly and capitalizing on the briefest opportunities to take shots at their adversaries. A fascinating aspect of this struggle was the ingenuity of camouflage units. Recognizing the need to deceive enemy snipers, these units crafted elaborate decoy heads using readily available materials. One of the most popular choices was paper mache, a cost-effective and versatile material that was widely used before the war in various forms of entertainment. These decoy heads, meticulously fashioned in small, improvised workshops on the front lines, exhibited an astonishing level of realism. Sculptors paid careful attention to facial details and meticulously colored the faces to resemble actual human skin. This commitment to authenticity was crucial, considering that the decoy heads would be scrutinized through scopes equipped with magnifying lenses. To further enhance the lifelike appearance of the decoy heads, some were equipped with rubber surgical tubes connected to the mouth, featuring a strategically placed cigarette. When air was blown through the tube, it created the illusion of a soldier casually smoking, increasing the likelihood of attracting the attention of a sniper. Mounted on long sticks, these decoy heads were strategically lifted above trench parapets to lure snipers into revealing their positions. If a sniper fell for the ruse and targeted the dummy head, the resulting bullet holes served as valuable indicators for the soldiers. Techniques such as triangulation or the use of periscopes inserted into the dummy heads were then employed to pinpoint the sniper's location.